Today, I'm doing my dream upgrade to the van. I'm ripping out all this mess of DIY power and I'm putting in an AC200 Max by Blue Eddy, the sponsor of today's video. Portable power stations have come a long way since my dad and I built out my van four years ago. There were only a couple units on the market at that time. They were very small, they had limited features, and they had the old school battery chemistry where you're not supposed to use it below 20% and you're not supposed to charge it above 80%. In 2019, this DIY mess of wires was the best way to get real deal power into a van. But today, the portable power station is the most interesting and innovative piece of tech that we have going. They get better and better just about every six months. So one reason to change it all up now is I have all these exposed wires and components. I am so lucky at this point that I haven't damaged anything. I take all kinds of stuff up to Everstoke, building materials. I do dump runs in this all the time, just fill it up, cram it full, and somehow I haven't damaged anything and set fire to anything. And the great thing about taking these components out, they still work fine. I can bring them up to my off-grid property and we will definitely put them to use. Swapping out with the AC200 Max is a pretty good trade-off to have such a small footprint. The inverter in my van puts out 2,000 watts. The Blue Eddy puts out 2,000 watts. The batteries in my van can store 2,400 watt hours of energy. The Blue Eddy is only a little bit less at 2,048 watt hours. Another great bonus with the Blue Eddy is actually being able to take it out and put it in the kitchen when there's a power outage and plug in the fridge and keep things going that are critical. I think the biggest win with the AC200 Max is finally I'm going to have clear and concise data on my phone of how much power is left in the batteries, how much charge is coming in from the solar panels, and how much energy is going out into the van. Right now I have a very vague and unreliable diagram that has a smiley face when things are good and a sad face when things are bad. I've got two permanently mounted solar panels on top of the van that have been the sole source of power for almost four years. Except for that time in Durango where I actually did drain the batteries dead, had to go buy a trickle charger, and then once things got up to a certain level, the solar panels could take back over. I think the panels are 100 watts each. It's been so long I have actually forgotten, which is nice because when we plug them into the Blue Eddy, we'll know. And solar power wattage is almost always overstated. Even on the clearest best day, a 100 watt panel is probably only going to put out 80 watts. And on the subject of solar, one of the biggest gotchas with these portable power stations is the solar power input range. The Blue Eddy here has a fantastic range of 10 to 145, so you can hook up one 12 volt cheapo panel from Harbor Freight and it'll actually work. Some of the other portable power stations I've tested, you need a couple different panels to be hooked up to get the input voltage high enough for it to work. So now it's time to get started and carefully take everything out without damaging it. Easier said than done. This fuse box here is my DC load center. This is gonna stay in the van, but I'll probably relocate it somewhere else. This powers the refrigerator, the fan, some other USB charging stuff, and probably another thing that I'm forgetting. So with batteries, when you disconnect them, the negative comes off first, the positive comes off second. So let me see if I can figure that out. This is the negative here. Hopefully. Whew. Okay, a lot of the heavy lifting has been done. I got my load center separated. I took some pictures, so hopefully I can reconnect it all pretty easily. And now I got the big boy that will hopefully all come out in one piece. Oh, still hanging on. There we go. Any mice living back here? Sharp edges. So now I've got a big old nice mess of wires to untangle, reroute, and just make sure everything's going this way because this is where the load center is going to be. It's a little intimidating at first, but I'll just go through bit by bit. I'm definitely making some new discoveries along the way. And I'm very glad I have a bunch of speaker wire left over that will be perfectly usable for this project. So I just had to pull back the galley to get some access and I was able to find a little treasure back here. 
It's actually not as bad and dirty and dusty as I thought it would be after four years. And now I have almost forgotten why I pulled the thing back. Oh yeah, it's because I need to get access to this panel. Okay, I'm 10 hours into this little expedition and I've got the wires spliced and diced and rerouted over here, very nice and stealth. And now I got the big jumble of stuff over here and I got to set up the load center, but I'm feeling pretty good. Sometimes I fantasize about building out a new van. I've got all these different ideas that I'd like to execute, but then you think about the time, the effort, the energy, the money. Oh, it's just, it chills me to my bones. So the linchpin piece of critical infrastructure for my setup is this cable. It's a 12 volt, 30 amp RV plug that you can buy from Blue Eddy. I got mine on Amazon. It goes all the way through here and then it goes into my load center. This is such a nice, simple, elegant solution because everything after here is hardwired in. Unplug this one cable, unplug the other cable, and the Blue Eddy is free to move about the cabin. Of course, I'm really hoping it doesn't move about the cabin very much. So I used a bunch of rubber, ooey gooey, double-sided mastic tape to keep this thing held in place, and I think it's doing pretty dang good. Right up against this, along the bottom, and I think it's gonna stay put, but I will monitor the situation. All right, this is uh, pretty cool now. Gradually, then suddenly. It took many, many hours, and then all of a sudden it came together all at once. I got the load center all wired up and tucked away decently. When I'm driving in the van, I'm sure I'm gonna hear some riddle rattles going that I will eventually fix as need be. It is great to finally know how many watts the refrigerator takes. It's around 25 when it first starts, and then it kind of mellows out to around 10 watts, which is nothing. And the fan at full blast is about 25 watts, which is also not that much when I've got 2,000 watt hours in this thing. And I've got 260 watts of solar coming in right now. I plugged it in earlier and I was a little befuddled as to why it wasn't working because the battery was at 100% charge. If the battery's at 100%, you're not gonna get any solar incoming. I also hooked up all my various USB ports around the van and my propane detector because I have a propane heater. If it starts leaking, that will notify me. I also tested out my little oscillating fan, which is an absolute MVP on a hot summer's night inside the van. That thing only took six watts. I've also got camera batteries to charge and my laptop, which does use a little bit of power, but I don't think it's that bad. I've got like the newest generation MacBook Pro and that thing runs for days. One of the big things I need to add back into the van that I took out is an LED light strip around the ceiling. I had a little mouse problem in my ceiling a couple months ago. We were up at Everstoke. I was unloading stuff at night. And then when Sarah and I went to bed, we heard endless scratching in the roof. And I was just like, oh no, there's a mouse in the van. It was three nights of absolute torture sleeping in that van, hearing it run around at all hours of the night. We had to turn up white noise as loud as we could just to drown it out and get any kind of sleep. And then it still took a few more days at home to get it into a trap and to give up the ghost. And then let's just say it wasn't alone. It was a pregnant mouse. That's all in the past now. We're moving on. We're good. It's so nice to have the Bluetooth app on my phone so I can be in the front of the van looking at the stats and making sure everything is good to go instead of having to crawl back here. Of course, I'll have to crawl back here every once in a while to check on things, but it's so nice. And of course, you don't have to just use solar to charge up the AC200 Max. It comes with an AC adapter that you can plug into the wall. It'll charge up about 450 watts. So take about four hours or so from zero to 100%. So if I didn't have solar panels on my van, you could see I could last quite a bit with the loads that I have. You can also charge with the solar and the AC adapter at the same time. You can also charge up with the old cigarette lighter in your car, which is pretty slow going, but there are ways to wire this up so it actually gives you a decent amperage. It's just kind of a separate thing. And if you're doing more of a home backup system, you can add on a couple extra batteries, the B300, and you can get the whole system up to eight kilowatt hours. One of the best things about the modern day power stations versus four years ago is they use the lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry, which I think only a couple of the Tesla models are just now starting to use. You can basically drain your battery down to zero and all the way back up to 100% 
3,500 times before it actually does any damage to the battery. Once you do that, you're only down to 80% of the life of the battery. So it's basically like charge and discharge every day for 10 years or something like that. It's fantastic. All right, after having everything torn out of here, I was able to put Humpty Dumpty back together again, and now I am so happy with the clean setup in the van. So last night, I started up the fridge, the overhead vent fan, and the oscillating fan to simulate a hot night in the van, keeping all those appliances going overnight to see how much battery we would use. The test went pretty good. I started the Blue Eddy at 100%, and it ran for 11 hours and only got down to 63%. Plenty of power left over for charging a laptop or phones. I'm actually very surprised how energy efficient the refrigerator is and both the fans. They run at such a low wattage that it works out so good. You could be hot and sweaty in the van and just keep that stuff running all night. So let's test this thing with something that's a little less energy efficient. This kettle puts out 1500 watts to boil water in the morning. I've got it set to max. There's 900 milliliters in here, about 30 ounces. Boil, baby, boil. It's going pretty quick. On the bottom of the kettle, it says it's rated for 1500 watts, but as we can see right here, it's actually only pulling 1100 watts. The watch pot does boil. All right, we got to 212 degrees. Took about five minutes to get there. The battery started at 64% and now it's down to 59%. So only about 5% battery to get your trendy pour over or tea in the morning. So that would be pretty similar to a hair dryer, a heat gun, some of the power tools. The AC200 Max would be great at a remote job site. You get a couple solar panels plugged in and you're good to go. One thing that I've found really amazing is how efficient cordless power tools are. If you have a bunch of batteries with your tools, they are amazing. Of course, all my batteries are fully charged right now, but if they weren't, this charging station runs at 60 watts. You could run hours and hours and hours of your batteries on the job site, swapping in, swapping out. I am so happy to get the power dialed in, cleaned up in the van, so much more room now. I've got many dump runs to go on in the van. <laughs> got plenty to clean up. Thank you, Blue Eddy, for sponsoring this video. Check out the link to the AC200 Max in the description. There's a coupon code for you as well. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you on the trail.